viewers, eight Indian lives are hanging in the balance in Qatar. This after a court in Doha found these individuals guilty of allegedly spying for Israel. Within moments of the news breaking, shocking Indian geopolitical analysts began questioning Doha's motives. Were the eight ex-Navy men paying the price for the Modi government standing in solidarity with Israel? Qatar, as is well known, is home to the Hamas chief Ismail Haniyeh, as well as its former leader Khalid Mashal. But before we get to these questions, let's first update you with the sketchy facts in the public domain. The facts are sketchy, viewers, only because Qatar has never made the charges against these eight Indians public. They have never come out and elucidated in the public domain what the case is against these people. This is, of course, a major reason to doubt the motives of the Qatari security authorities. But viewers, of the little that there is in the public domain, most of it has come to us via sources who say that the eight Indians had been working in their private capacity for a company called Dhara Global in Doha. That's right, viewers. Dhara Global in Doha. They were apparently tasked with overseeing the induction of Italian stealth submarine U-2I-2. Sometime in August last year, these eight Indians were taken into custody and held in solitary confinement. But when Delhi began to work the back channels, the ex-Navy men got some relief and were moved into a double occupancy jail ward. Interestingly, charges were also framed against two Qatari nationals, one of whom is the CEO of the company, of this company, which of course now has been disbanded. But sources claim that these two Qataris were freed. Yet, viewers, eight Indians belonging to the same company have been given the death sentence. Many people are wondering if a different yardstick is being applied to judge the eight Indians and of course the Qatari owner of the company and his associate. Now viewers, what do we know apart from all of this? Nothing, absolutely nothing. Surely viewers, a nation that goes out there and awards the death penalty to eight foreigners would have taken the precaution of providing all the information in the public domain so that no one, least of all a friend and ally, would question their motives. Viewers, of course, no information is out there. The Indian government is worried. Four hearings have taken place in what is called the first court of instance. Before the death sentences were handed out, only four hearings, viewers, four hearings. We don't even know if these individuals, these eight decorated ex-servicemen were able to present their case. We don't know this. Just four hearings. And it just took four hearings to sentence eight people, eight Indians, eight decorated Indians to death. The families of the ex-Navy men are shattered. They've also filed a mercy plea to the Emir of Qatar. In India, the pressure is now mounting on the center to free the ex-servicemen. Viewers, several politicians are coming out from the opposition ranks and asking basic questions of the government. Asaduddin Owaisi is one of the first. He says, in August, I had raised the issue of our ex-naval officers stuck in Qatar. Today, they have been sentenced to death. He goes on to say, the Prime Minister boasted about how much Islamic countries love him. He must bring our ex-naval officers back. It's very unfortunate that they face death row. Manish Tiwari of the Congress, the Member of Parliament, had the government been serious, then things would never have come to this where eight Navy men would have been sentenced to death for an alleged offence whose details are still unknown. 
The BJP government, for all its muscular nationalism, has completely failed to protect the dignity, honor, and lives of our ex servicemen. Then there is, of course, Sanjay Raut of the Sena, the Uddhar Thakare Sena. He's also a member of parliament. He says the naval veterans were in jail for over eight months. What action has the government taken? Duty of the government to save their lives. Now, while Delhi has been in a diplomatically more expansive mode while dealing with Canada, for instance, viewers, it will have to be measured against Doha. That's the reality. Qatar has aligned its national vision 2030 to the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative. Apart from the Hamas, it also provides the Taliban a base on its soil. Given the need to have a friendly dispensation in Kabul and given India's own plans of establishing the Indian Middle Eastern Europe corridor as a counter to China's BRI, New Delhi can't be seen to be dictating terms to a key strategic player like Qatar. India is also heavily dependent on Qatar for its energy security. What will work in India's favor though is that Qatar is a key US regional ally and Delhi can hope to use its access to Washington to negotiate a reprieve for its citizens. Though India will be forced to walk the diplomatic tightrope, it doesn't mean that Qatar is above accountability. There are questions to be asked, viewers, and I'm posing some tonight. Why hasn't Qatar disclosed details of charges against eight Indians? This is a baseline question. Any individual being tried should have the right to know the details of the case. And especially if that individual is a foreigner, his government is honor bound, duty bound to actually go out there and fight that person's case, especially if they are ex-servicemen and therefore must be aware of what charges have been made against these eight former servicemen. Is the verdict's timing linked to India's solidarity with Israel? Many people, many experts are saying that because Hamas is based, viewers, out of Doha, there is pressure on the Qatari government. And if they can use these ex-servicemen as pawns in the game, they could perhaps get India to dilute its stand on the Israel-Hamas war. Are India's ties with Qatar a one-way relationship? Indeed, viewers, are India's ties with the Middle East a one-way relationship? Remember, if you really look at the trade figures, the trade is heavily balanced in favor of Qatar. If I'm not mistaken, viewers, India's trade with Qatar is 90% leveraged in favor of Qatar because we import almost 80% of our energy, fuel, etc., gas from Qatar. The big question, therefore, tonight, why the secrecy over the trial? Is Qatar taking India for granted? Hello, what can we do in return to free our soldiers? The Qatar espionage trial, why the secrecy is a big question. Let's open this up, viewers, without delay. And I want to begin by asking some very, very basic questions. <coughs> I want to first begin with uh, Rohan Gururatne and defense expert General Bakshi. Mr. Gururatne, we know the score. We know that eight of our citizens have been awarded the death penalty. Now, there are two questions that flow. Why is there secrecy surrounding this trial, which obviously holds a huge implication for these eight lives that are hanging in the balance? My personal view is that uh, India and Qatar should discuss this matter behind closed doors. It is a matter for discussion between the two national security advisors. It's a very sensitive matter and it is important that this is not discussed through the Ministry of uh, External Affairs. Then it becomes a public matter. 
every country spies on other countries and it is crucial that this is managed behind closed doors between the two national security advisors certainly this is a matter of the highest national security importance for the indian government the prime minister of uh, india and the national security advisor should discuss this matter and no, mr gununathne you made the point every country spies on other countries how are you so certain that these individuals are guilty we do not know that but what is important is that behind closed doors india and qatar discuss this matter rather than make it uh, another open issue like the canadian uh, indian issue these matters are very sensitive and they need to be discussed behind the scenes and not put in the public domain okay what has transpired over the last few months obviously viewers very few of us have even known that there was an issue such as this it was not in the public domain but clearly india has not been able to exercise much leverage over doha otherwise we wouldn't be seeing this kind of a judgment handed down only after four hearings reportedly against eight indian citizens general bakshi what's the problem here are these people been framed to settle scores is this at someone's instance is this qatar taking india for granted what is going on here you know uh, i am very sorry to state uh, rahul but qatar seems to be treating india as a very lightweight and i don't think that is quite in consonance with the ground realities rahul i request you to go back to the time when jadav had been framed he had been kidnapped from iran taken to pakistan accused of spying and then handed out the death sentence like this we took that case to the international court of justice we fought it tooth nail and claw now it is nice to say that yes we should talk it out quietly this happened 22nd of august it's almost 18 months uh, 16 months since then there's been enough of talking quiet the fact of the matter is these were very respectable naval officers three captains uh, six uh, 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 three captains four uh, commanders and one naval rating they had been working in a navigation school opened for the qatari navy the qatari navy had been very appreciative of this and one of the captains was given the bhartiya pravasi award at the recommendations of doha we have similar schools in singapore in thailand nobody has accused us of spying and uh, they are saying that uh, just because that same company was involved with the iranian uh, 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 you know with the italian induction of a, st a stealth submarine these boys gave information firstly that charge hasn't been made officially we've not received that charge as yet what have they been booked for number 1 number 2 if it is an espionage case do you need seven people to hand over one document you know it's like something like the samba case one approver he said the whole brigade headquarter was spying for pakistan so many people were tortured their careers ruined etc because of wild allegations in this case rahul we have to be doubly careful the pakistani isi has a hand in this whole fracas pakistan has been running training for all the arab countries muslim countries and they feel very threatened that indian professionals are making inroads into this training avenues at least in the arab countries and there is you know reason to believe that it is the isi that sent up these frame charges okay so there are frame charges these boys need a proper defense counselor access was granted a few months 
after they were apprehended they were kept in solitary confinement i god knows what was done to them in that solitary confinement now they have been handed the death sentence you know as if india sensitivity is they don't care a damn okay Le- the fact let's- is we will have to fight for these boys like we fi- fought for jadav we will have to exercise our leverage and uh, the prime minister you know we are we are we are so happy to know that the prime minister has so much wield so much influence in the middle east i think it's about time for him to intervene it's and time for him to intervene varis pathan okay let me ask you because you don't believe that the prime minister's diplomacy and his government's diplomacy has had the desired effect now it's easy to of course blame the indian authorities what do you first make of the qatari move let's talk about that do you think it's highly condemnable what they've done and the manner in which they have approached this case for hearings that also quite secretive no information out in the public domain sources are telling us that there was some electronic evidence that was used so first of all let's agree on one or two basic points do you believe the qataris have been fair and should this trial have been conducted in secrecy <clears throat> well rahul it's very shocking and unfortunate that eight of our ex navy servicemen have been convicted they have been uh, given death penalty by the qatar government our party president asad oweisi in the month of august has raised this issue on the floor of the parliament he requested the government that they have been incarcerated since last more than one year kindly take steps to ensure that they reach their home india peacefully and secure the release but till that time nobody did heed to this arguments his submissions and today what we see is that the qatar government has already sentenced them to death penalty now modi ji when he went to qatar he said it feels like it is his second home that is what the things were going on that time so why all of a sudden that the second home is now thinking that modi is the, not what what was the indian government doing what was ajit doval or for the external affairs minister jay shankar were doing why no steps were seen to it that, to ensure that they are taken back from custody or why no proper legal aid was provided to them what were the charges leveled against them nobody knows rahul in fact even i don't know what are the basic charges leveled against them so far what we are hearing is from the media that they were doing something for the israel so, so you saying that is what there should be something more Pathan but Jab, we are you want saying our gore, are you, you know, saying that this was made, some sort of a kangaroo court justice that has been handed down to these uh, eight is that what you're saying are you questioning the qatari commitment Mod- to justice here but then modi was very friendly with the qatari that's government that's okay i'm asking you modi what is your assessment you're a man of law like you're a lawyer but do you believe eight, that the yes, qataris I'm, of, i'm talking as a lawyer okay so Raul, let, do, do you believe that the qataris have given today i'm talking the speaking eight, like a lawyer yes sir so i'm asking you to assess this do you think the qataris have done have followed due process in executing this sentence where they have sentenced eight of our citizens to death well the qatar government should have informed our government and our government should have taken prompt and immediate steps to ensure that they are given proper they are provided proper legal aid mm. had there been some kind of uh, di- talks with the top level the diplomatic level i am sure i think they would have been released by now okay. but now what happened to kulbushan case also we fought mm. in the international court of law but till today kulbushan jadav has not been brought to india but we would request the government of our country that please mr prime minister modi okay. let me Ministry, bring in rt tikku on this point sure that they are brought back peacefully has the Use all the levels Use okay. all the diplomatic channels. Right. Approach the International Court of Law okay. to see that this our eight of our ex servicemen are brought back. Okay. We'll talk country. about what are the options in the second half of this. But I just want to quickly bring you in, Arthi Tikku. Do you believe the Indian government has dropped the ball, plain and simple? Well, uh, Rahul. First of all, we must acknowledge what Qatar's role has been in radicalizing. muslim youth across the world and we must also acknowledge the role of qatar in sponsoring salafist islamist ideology 
No, that's okay, also, but how is that related to this matter? Let's first I'll address this issue. I want why, to ask you a direct why? question. All of that, of course, you know, we'll come to. My question here is, did the Indian government drop the ball? Well, see, first of all, as other panelists have also pointed out, these eight people were working in a private firm and working in private capacity. Now, the government of India, as as a um, securer and a defender of its citizens has put out put out the statement that it made the mea made publicly because it's a matter of eight indian citizens and i think to that extent the government of india has taken the right course but at the same time we must we must absolutely call out qatar for the role that it has played generally in disrupting no, I'll come India. to that, but I just want to draw your attention to the manner in which the United States, for example, pursued the release of some of its citizens who have periodically found themselves in trouble either in the UAE or in Saudi. They have been able to secure the release of their citizens. The British have had problems with some of these countries. We know that perhaps they look at the law other aspects from a different lens than other people do. So you've had situations in the past, but we've seen that while those citizens have gone through immense torture, eventually their governments came and bailed them out. Here I'm asking you a simple question. Okay, Should or it. could I the government it. have done let more? Me, let me respond to this. Rahul, uh, yes, you're absolutely right that other governments have used their leverage when it comes to issues like this and India at the moment certainly carries a lot of weight in global politics. It has uh, not only not only the economic might but also the geopolitical might as of today and India must government must certainly use that leverage. So far we haven't seen yes you're right that they have been in jail for last one year and the government of india hasn't pushed it enough but i think uh, but i think the government of india certainly because as you rightly pointed out that the trade is hugely actually skewed in favor of qatar and that that itself is a problem that itself is something that the government must look into why has qatar received so much leverage so much weightage in our geopolitics when India has several options, several alternatives. In fact, Qatar has got a long rope in the last one year. Let's keep this discussion restricted to this particular case. In the last one year itself, the government of India could have used many levers. The government of India could have used many cards, whether it was trade or whether it was calling out it on uh, its role in terrorism or whether uh, the role of Al Jazeera, Zakir Naik, you know, hosting. So there were n number of occasions when the government of India could have questioned and could have cornered Qatar and it did not unfortunately. So yes, absolutely. We must question the government on this. The government uh, should did not rise up to the occasion in the last one year. But it's high time now that the death penalty has been announced. It's high time that the government of India takes it up with all its rigor and also its might. Well, let me tell you, viewers, that the ball now is really in the Emir's court because only he can actually issue a pardon. And to that extent, we're in a bit of a fix because eight lives, eight lives have been adjudged, viewers, as spies. Spies for whom? Israel. We all know Qatar's absolute Israelophobia. It exhibits it has a problem with it. We know this. It houses the Hamas. And that kind of alleged charge is going to weigh very heavily. It shouldn't have even come to this. The government should have been more proactive. Unfortunately, even when it comes to Canada, it has been reactive. Comes to Britain, it's reactive on the Khalistan issue. Protests happen, our embassies get targeted, then we wake up. This should not be happening. If you have clout, if you have been able to now exert or flex muscles across the globe, 
then these countries should be taking you seriously, especially if they think of you as strategic partners or trade partners. But that's not happening, viewers. And therefore, I want to come to Sushil Pandit. Sushil Pandit, do we over-romanticize our ties with Gulf countries? Are our ties with Middle East countries subject to certain limitations? And what are these limitations? Let's get to the bottom of the issue. Let's get to the skeletons in the cupboard. Thank you, Rahul, for having me on your show. I think it's time for some plain speak. This is an unmistakable snub to our diplomacy and our political leadership. In fact, more than that, Qatar has humiliated us in the international arena. You do not not share the charges. You do not not conduct the trial in public. You do not arbitrarily hand over death sentence to eight senior ex-soldiers from this country unless you are out to rub our nose in mud. Qatar has done this second time because the first time we capitulated when they raised their finger on Nupur Sharma issue and we tamely surrendered. So Qatar is out to again make an example out of us and sure they will not hang these eight gentlemen from India. They will not, they dare not. But they have done this to extract some concessions out of us. They have done this to force us to change course on certain issues and we will in time, in good time get to know what is it that we had to do in order to save these eight gentlemen. But I agree with you, there is no over romanticizing or exaggerating the fact that India has some huge clout or some huge leverage with these countries. We have been doing their bidding, we have been unilaterally offering them a lot of room, a lot of flexibility in our policy consistently without getting much in return. We have been mollycoddling the Palestinian issue without getting a reciprocity on Kashmir. We have been overtly dependent on them as energy suppliers without realizing that we are the second largest energy importer in this world. And therefore that gives us legitimate clout which we have never used. We have treated this as some kind of a weakness. It is about time we actually put our so-called clout to work and not let these tin pot Islamic dictators turn our foreign policy on its head or our reputation rubbed in mud. It okay. is about time we it's showed time. our st sp spine of steel to them. Well, let me tell you, General Bakshi, I want to bring you in on this. You're a keen observer of geopolitics. Mr. Gunaratne also there with us. I'll bring them in now for a more studied approach on this. I think Mr. Pandit has set this up perfectly. And General Bakshi, you know, we've stood with Arab countries. First, of course, it was Turkish nationalism before independence that we were espousing. When we backed the Khilafat movement. Then it comes to Arab nationalism. We dumped Israel from the very beginning. We didn't even want to establish with it deeper diplomatic, normalized ties. We chose the Arab world. We said, we are with you because you are fighting imperialism, especially US imperialism. We chose an independent route, strategic autonomy, call it what you want to. We batted for them at every international fora. But when it comes to looking after Indian interests, We've not had the kind of support that we have given. What do you put this down to General Bakshi? Uh, you know, Rahul, you are very right. Both you and Sushil have framed the issue perfectly. The simple fact is that there has been a paradigm shift in the Middle East. And you know when that happened? It happened after this 9-11. The United States stopped buying a sim single drop of oil from the Middle East. Not a single drop of oil. The United States today is in a position to export oil. Right? So the simple fact is, 
who do the Middle Eastern states sell their oil to? China and India. India today has the option of going to the Russians in a very major way. These people are more dependent on us than, you know, we care to acknowledge. We, we can push our weight. Why do you think people have been giving so much, you know, uh, you know, uh, so, uh, have been trying to give so much respect to our Prime Minister in the Middle East? Because they know which way their bread is buttered. They know that if India doesn't buy their oil, will they eat it? That is the simple fact. We are still stuck in a time warp when, you know, Palestinian nationalism was supposed to be supported because we wanted the Muslim world on our side. The Muslim world took every, you know, chance to rub us on the issue of Kashmir. There was Israel prepared to help us in military technological terms. So we spurned so on that in. for a romantic kind of a Okay, so let me bring in. Varish Pathan... Is there time now to basically recalibrate ties with the Middle East? I know that we are energy dependent, but there are others who can supply <clears throat> us oil. I don't hear that from you. I didn't hear a unilateral, from your leader, unilateral condemnation of the Qatari justice system. For, for hearing, sir, hardly any proof. We don't even know if our poor citizens had access to councils and if they did which who where we don't know but no condemnation you immediately went for prime minister modi juggler yes you're in the opposition you can do that i want to ask you have we given more than we have got back from the middle east Well, well, Raul, India has got the G20 presidency with them. They use all these contacts at a diplomatic level, at top level, and see to ensure that it's the duty of the Indian government to see to it that they are brought by home back safely. India must use that rather than shifting blames and saying that no Qatari government is this. What was the Indian government doing? Since last one year, we knew that they are no, in the I custody. understand that. What but, steps but were taken by the Indian I government to ensure that safe question. What steps were taken? I'm, I'm no, asking you. the international law. No, you, no, one, one second, condemnation one second. will not bring them back. Sir, one second. Clearly, my condemnation okay. will not bring them back safely home. I agree the with you. I'm asking you a separate question, sir. I'm asking you a separate question. Have we, have we you given... Are, you are telling me to condemn it. If I condemn, will the Qatari courts allow them to re okay. release? Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. If I condemn the Your Qatari point courts, is... if I condemn the Qatari kingdom, okay. will they allow them to go there freely? That's no, a that's a point made. I'm asking the government of the day to ensure to it that they are brought back. Right, point well made. They must take steps. The government, Modi must take step and show to it that they are brought back around. Okay. One so larger question. Condemnation will not take steps to anywhere. Okay, fair enough. Condemnation step, won't help. That, that what is, is the point of condemning of Qatar? They've done what they had to do. Okay. <laughs> one second, one second. I, I'll just bring you in, Sushil Pandit. I just want one follow-up question to Mr. Patan. The question I asked you was a larger question about have we bent over backwards? Have we invested more in our relations with the Arab world than we have got back, sir? Look at Qatar, for example. Qatar is, has, and I'll just give you some numbers, $15 billion in trade with India, out of which India's export to Qatar was only $1.83 billion. Out of the $15 billion of bilateral trade, our exports are only $1.83 billion. $13.19 billion is what we give Qatar, is what we give Qatar to buy oil, gas, etc., 80%. Of that comes to us and India was among the top four largest export destinations for Qatar It is also among the top three sources of Qatar's imports so we have leverage therefore I'm asking you sir whether it is Qatar or other countries in the Arab world have we given more than we have got back Pathan Bhai no, present situation now you are talking about is I did not get what you are asking me the question now. My first priority is to see to ensure that our eight ex servicemen, Navy, they are brought back to home. You want to have a political thing into it? You can, but we are worried There's about no those political lives. thing. I'm and looking the, at the, the diplomatic responsibility imbalance of the in the relationship. I understand, sir. I've called that out. Yes, I've well, already Modi said goes there in that Abu the Indian Dhabi. government needs to well, do Modi a lot goes more. To Abu Dhabi. I agree with you. A lot more needs yes, to be no, done. Well, Modi goes to Abu I have Dhabi. made that point. But I he think we also... The yes, sir. Yes, sir. When, but, but there are sensitivities involved. When, when, when Indians have a right 
to also expect yes. goodwill from countries that you go out of your way to defend in international fora, that you do trade with, that you invest your human resource in so that their economies become more productive. Viewers, most of the Gulf economies are powered by Indian intellect or Indian labor. So, Sushil Pandit, why is it that these Arab countries don't reciprocate when the cookie is crumbling? Eight Indian lives are hanging in the balance. And this is not the first time. We have had citizens jailed in the UAE on very frivolous charges. Indian labor, for example. In Saudi Arabia, we know whippings, lashings, all sorts of, um, some people would say, injudicious sentences handed out. This is a repeat play. Rahul, because from day one, this relationship is not that of an equal. We have willingly okay. uh, given ourselves a lower pedestal in this relationship. And we have time and again made concessions, capitulated to their unjust demands. And of course, swallowed humiliation on different issues. I must remind you, when in the first Organization of Islamic Countries Conference in Morocco. Our delegation was invited and halfway through the conference it was thrown out. We stuck to our ground, we refused to leave. They actually lock us up in, their, in our rooms. They cut off the electricity. They won't even let us get into the conference arena. That is the level of humiliation we have stomached and carried on supporting their resolutions on uh, Palestine Why? and other sundry Why do we issues. do it? Why do we do it? Because, yes, and you have a panelist sitting in your show because we have a huge political obsession about vote banks, about virtue signaling, about oh, all okay. kinds of profit and loss account and, and our foreign policy our national interest was held hostage to these extraneous reasons. These extraneous and it reasons. Continues that and they're mostly continues political. They should not be continuing. Okay, one, one Absolutely. second. Let me bring in Mr. And Rohan we must Gunaratne. remember Rahul. We must remember Rahul. I, 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 I'll just make one more point, Rahul, if, you are, if yeah, I may. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the judiciary in Qatar is neither independent nor transparent. It is an extension of their monarchy. So let's not make a dualism here about judiciary, what they did, okay. and what their political Rohan leadership Gunaratna. does. It okay. is very clearly. Okay, well, basically then, we know that we have to engage the Qatari establishment. Now, what leverage can we exercise, Mr. Gunaratne? And I want to bring in General Bakshi right after that. Yes. India has a multi-directional foreign policy. India is working with Russia, also working with the United States. India should work with Qatar to secure the release of these Indian nationals because this is a national security case. This case is not an ordinary case. That is why I propose either Ajit Doval or Dr. Jayashankar travel to Qatar and meet their counterparts behind closed doors okay. and to discuss this matter. This matter should not be handled openly because it is an espionage case okay. and, and the lives of these people it's an are alleged, at risk. Alleged, alleged espionage case. We don't know. It could be completely framed. Yes, Arti Tiku, you want to make a quick point before I bring in General Jiri Bakshi? Yes. Yes. First of all, uh, I don't know why we are repeatedly saying that it's an espionage case. This is an accusation leveled by the Qatari government, which is a Sharia monarchy. I mean, they can say whatever and why do we have to accept their allegations? Well, we number don't know. Two, number two, Nothing number is out two, in the open. Number two, number, yeah. two, number, two, number two is that I have actually spoken to uh, a friend of one of the one of the veterans who has mm -hmm. been given death penalty and he said that actually there is no espionage case and it's actually a uh, owner of the company, the private company where the eight veterans were working, 
his sister apparently wrote something nasty on social media uh, platform and that was taken as an offense by the Katri government. Now, I don't know whether it's true or well, not. We don't this know. Is, this is a problem, this is what, viewers. This is, what, this is what one of the families is saying. In an information now, vacuum, all sorts of allusions will be made to all sorts of um, unfortunate circumstances and we don't know the truth. And you see, that's where I want to bring in. Give me 30 seconds, Arti Tiku. I want to bring no, in... Just, gen yes. I just wanted to make last one point. Yes, one yeah, last yeah. point. No, please. Yeah. Yeah, uh, why, why I am repeatedly saying that we should be talking about the role of Qatar in terrorism in India. No, because, I, I, no, I, no, I, you know, I, I'll I tell get, you something. Arti Tiku, that, all of that, that. No, I one get, second, one second. I get that. See, I, I don't want that. to, look, the problem is, that. no, one second. The problem is, Arti Tiku, I'll just be very honest with you. We also have a responsibility to our citizens who are actually right now facing a lot of trouble in Qatar. Do we want the Qataris to feel or give them an excuse to further turn the knives in their back. So I'm deliberately not going down that route. I don't want those lives jeopardized further by going out there and upsetting equations. These are very delicate times. Yes, yes, there are wheels within wheels. But as Mr. Gunaratne, to one point I do agree, the more we sort of expand on those issues, the lesser the chances of the Qataris stepping down or stepping back because they will think of this, therefore, I, I as an entirely I, ego I, I issue. So just one second. Let me bring General I, Bakshi in. Just give me 30 I seconds, please. Talk about it, yeah, just forget I it. General Bakshi, General Bakshi comes in right now. I want to ask you, General Bakshi, Qatar has a great relationship with the United States. India is supposed to be the pivot to the Indo-Pacific for the United States. How does it come to this? Despite all of this leverage, despite the fact that we have the United States in our corner, we have others like Russia who could also approach the Qataris. How is it that we have not been able to exercise any leverage? And what do we do now? And, uh, and uh, you know, uh, Rahul, that is what distresses me. This is not something which has happened now and hence is hostage to the Hamas Israel you know situation or to those complications mm. this case goes back to 22nd august last year yeah that means full 16 months uh, rohan is right that it should have been done backstage that is what precisely has been happening backstage for the past about 16 months and every time we raised this issue, we were told, yes, something is being done, something is being done, and we are at it. We will get the boys out, etc. Now it comes to light that those boys have been, uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah. uh, handed out the death sentences. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, their, their necks are in the nose. And this is what hurts. You see, I mean, so, so, so there's something India here that is so not lightly? adding up, General Saab. There's something here that's not adding up. If you have continued a dialogue, as Rohan Gurunatre says, behind closed doors, I'm sure there has been contact. The last time I'm told, and this is all, again, source-based information that is coming through various government circles and others, they said that, look, uh, there was an engagement, that there was a conversation that happened, May and that, that led these individuals yes, to be brought out of solitary confinement and placed in better conditions, amongst others, in an open sort of uh, larger, uh, larger uh, cell where there were many more people. So things did become better, but suddenly, viewers, we've had to walk back a lot of territory because that was going in the right direction. Suddenly you go to another extreme direction. Yes, you want to make a point, Mr. Pathan, very quickly? Yeah, 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 just 10 seconds, Rahul. Just now I heard uh, Tikku, Arthur Tikkuji saying that she spoke to one of the victim's friend who has been convicted or who sentenced to death. And he said that this is not a case of espionage. Mm -hmm. I would like okay. her to take that man to the external affairs ministry's office. Let them place a the record before him. This okay. might as well help I'm us sure. in getting them out. I'm this sure. might as well help the I'm Indian sure government to secure happening. their release. I'm this sure that is happening. Fact before the I'll take a, court of law I'll take, to secure their release. I'll just take one second viewers and i'll just tell you that the time has come that we address this issue 
at the government level head on. If you have the clout, use it. Take a short break. We're going to come right back. The pressure will be on the government viewers. We will continue to follow this story to get our citizens back. They are Indians, viewers. We'll take a short break. We debate the Assam government's decision to crack down on polygamy next. Don't go away.